inconsistent extrusion, potentially clogged nozzles, and some heat creep when models are just failing at the same point. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 63. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here and you're struggling with your 3D printer, let us know in those comments down below, but you can always reach out to us on the social medias. Links are around me and use the hashtag print fix, or you can just slide into those DMs. They're normally open on basically every platform. But uh, keep an eye out because we are looking for more community submissions on this because it does help make these videos easier for us and then you get to be featured on the channel as well. It's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. We got a lot of awesome fails for you and Victoria makes a special appearance in this video. So make sure you guys stick around to see when the cat appears. What the cat does love is eating. She is about 15 pounds of wonderful. And that means I got to talk about our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. We get it. 3D printing is not always a perfect game. You end up failing from time to time, whether it's a frustrating thing or something that you enjoy, you might decide that it's not worth your time and you want to outsource it to the wonderful folks over at 3D Musketeers. We have over 40 years of experience and 40 3D printers to help you make that tight deadline when you need it. And in fact, we have some pretty awesome testimonials from customers. Put a couple of them on the screen so you guys can take a look. That occurred relatively recently, so thank you guys for leaving positive Google reviews. It helps the company grow. But we recognize that not everyone is looking for that 3D printing service. Maybe you want some 3D scanning. We, we offer that. You know, we've got Artec Eva, Artec Ray. There might be another Artec product coming soon. Shh. <laughs> as well as a few other scanners that are, of course, mobile and ready to scan wherever you might be. But again, that can be a little expensive and you might want to kick a buck or two into that creator fund to help make these videos possible. And hey, if you like them, give a share as well. But Patreon YouTube channel members are a great way to help the channel grow with a couple of bucks because, well, editing ain't cheap. Neither is social media work. And God, I still haven't been able to pay myself. But hey, that's the way it goes. I'm dedicated to helping you guys in the community. I hope that you all enjoy that. Let's get through this call to action. Like, subscribe, all the things. Share with your friends. Go put it on the Bamboo Lab Facebook page or something. I don't know. They hate me over there. <laughs> <laughs> but enough of that, let's get back into fixing some fails. Any cubic viper stops extruding in the middle of a print. Now see, this one is curious. It's any cubic viper, Cura, Amelin PLA, 190 on the nozzle, 60 on the bed, 60 on the print speed, 14 millimeter retraction distance. Good lord, that's rough. And you know what? I, I was going to say, it's, it's probably heat creep, right? We have two models that are stopping almost at the same point. I'm going to guess that it is heat creep as well. I would absolutely say it's the same thing. I, I don't think it's a partial clog because it looks great until this. And please don't use an acupuncture needle. If you use an acupuncture needle on a brass nozzle or even a stainless nozzle, if your needle is a harder material than your nozzle, you are going to damage your nozzle. If your needle is a softer material, so let's say you're running a Ether-D Obsidian or maybe you have a Diamondback nozzle, those are totally fine to use needles with because you're not going to hurt them. The needle is softer. You don't want to use it on a brass nozzle. You'll hurt. But I believe 14 millimeter retraction could be part of the problem too. We could see that it is just heat creeping over time or it might even be from extruder wear or even from work hardening of the material as you pull it in and out of the hot zone of the printer. So a couple of things to work on there. My best guess is heat creep. And if you are dealing with heat creep, it can be somewhat ish easy to figure out. Just listen. If it slowly starts and this looks like it's I mean, this quintessentially looks like heat creep because it is happening at roughly the same point. So it's a temperature thing. Make sure that your fan that is cooling down your heat sink is actually functioning. If it's not, replace it. If it is functioning, well, it ain't functioning very good and it is time to get a better one. Noctua makes good fans. Sunun makes good fans as well. We'll link to some in that description, although I don't know specifically what the Viper needs, so your mileage may vary. Worst comes to worst you could completely of course replace the hot end that's a bit of a excessive bit but you know hey you could nozzle marks causing blobs scars and zits and you're also missing an oxford comma i will die on that hill leave a like if you agree these are seam lines and retraction lines this printer is likely bowden let's see if we get some information on it nope 
No, we get nothing. They're aware that it is a seam line. However, they can see that there is always a delay. The nozzle stands still for a fraction of a second that worsens at the seam. I thought it was due to some bottleneck and data transfer process as I use Octoprint, but it's not the case. The problem also happens if I use the SD card slot. If you are dealing with a nozzle that is blobbing like that, you might be doing a Z hop in between your layer change and your Z hop might be very, very slow, giving you that build up and backup. This is where linear advance is a great thing that you can tune in with Marlin. Now this is a BQ printer. I'm not 100% sure what model it is, but Suffice to say, it's likely a Bowden printer, and that means it can benefit from some level of linear advance. Is it easy to do on a printer if you don't know what you're doing? No, you can put it into your start G code and tune it in, and there are test prints and all that to do it. So you could do that if you wanted and then just basically build it into your start code. But this I would guess has something to do with the speed of which you're moving your Z axis and the fact that you're likely retracting during your layer changes. Try that out, see if that works. Worst comes to worst, let's look at setting up some sort of linear advance or pressure advance. It will go to solve this problem. This is generally caused, in my opinion, when you have some buildup and backup in the tube. So also check to make sure that your Bowden tube is tight and not a little wiggly. If it's got some play in it or some give in it, this kind of backlash will cause some issues. If you're not sure, just replace it with some good genuine Capricorn tube. Links will of course be in that description down below. Irregular overflow, can't find a solution to it. Can it be two to bad quality plastic? Oh God, okay. So it appears that we have a nozzle that is looks like it might even be overheating the filament. It's Artillery Sidewinder X1.4. Oh, shit, it's an X1. Okay, stop right now. Do not move any further with this printer. You need to verify that your X1 actually has thermal runaway. For a while, Artillery was shipping out Sidewinder X1s without thermal runaway protection. You need to verify that yours is actually one of the safe ones. Because if it is for some reason overheating, you need to know that. So please check and also keep an eye on your ribbon cables. Those will absolutely be a point of failure on that machine over time. We have someone saying that it could be burn marks. I agree, it does kind of look like a burn mark. Asking about a temp tower might be printing too hot and to do a calibration cube and post that and that should highlight the issues. The individual doesn't understand how to do a temp tower and they want an ELI-5. Explain like I five. There are G codes out there that you can run and programs you can run to generate temp towers. And what a temp tower will do is every basic step of this tower, it will adjust your printer's heat of the actual hot in itself. So you can kind of dial in that right amount. Super Slicer is kind of known for doing it internally, but you can get ones like this from printables. And I'm sure there are websites that will generate the code for you as well. Just, you know, be a little careful. They are using Cura, and I think that this person's giving a great, great example of what it means, and they've explained it really well, so that's a plus. Oh, are we, are we good? Okay, all right, well, don't, don't rub on the microphone, please. I think Victoria's going to go now. Say goodbye, Victoria. Goodbye, Victoria. <laughs> Attempt Tower is not the easiest thing to explain if you don't inherently understand what it's doing or why it is valuable. So I appreciate that you are going through that effort. It could be temperature, but because the rest of the print looks okay. Every one of these photos, by the way, is completely out of focus. So please clean your camera and take new photos because that is just it's not focused. You're, you might be a little too close. I am wondering, because I'm seeing some blobbing here as well. Do we maybe have a loose nozzle or a loose heat break causing a bit of that buildup around the nozzle that is just depositing randomly throughout the print? And a lot of that happens to be around the corners. Don't really know on this one for sure. Let me know what you guys think in those comments. We'll follow up. But yeah, I... I would start with the temp tower just to make sure that everything's clean. But if you notice some things glooping on the nozzle, some extra crap that shouldn't be there that is returning over and over again, check at the block to the heat break and then at the block to the nozzle. So you're going to want to check from the block to the break. And you can actually see at some point in the life of this hot end, it did actually have some issues between the block and the heat sink. And then on the block and the nozzle side, you'll check to see if there's anything leaking there too. This one is not. This is an E3D V6. This one is the fully kitted out V6. Nozzle X 
copper block, titanium break, and a Prusa heat sink that I've definitely not used pliers on. When you're really lazy and you need to change out parts on a Prusa and you don't want to turn it off, you just kind of look, do as I say, not as I do. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, if you see any schmoo leaking out there, go ahead and retighten the system. If you did recently change your nozzle, you will need to retighten it when everything is warm because of course metal does expand and you want to make sure that it is tight up against everything when it is nice and warm. Any idea of how to fix this? So we got a calibration cube that uh, is definitely under extruding, likely a partial clog. So silk PLA 210 bed temp 60 inside of the print infill was set to 10%, but there's lots of stringing, poor layer adhesion between first few layers and this layer, really all layers. Yeah, I would agree. You got pretty poor adhesion on all layers. So we got someone saying, judging by uniform under extrusion, you might try looking first at whatever you inadvertently set your volumetric flow rate. Make sure it's set to off, then look at to a partially clogged nozzle. I don't believe that the volumetric flow rate here is going to matter because if you set your flow rate to be lower than the max of whatever it could be, it should just run the printer slower. At least that's my understanding. Correct me in the comments if I am wrong, but I would absolutely agree that this is likely due to a clog nozzle. Best way to do that is to get some regular PLA in there, forcibly extrude it out by hand, cool it down to about 150, 160, and then pull. Right, so you'll disengage your extruder and then pull the filament out rapidly. This is called a cold pull. And a lot of times that can alleviate any jams that you might have. You will continue to do that until the filament comes out clean. And if you're feeling extra spicy, you can remove the Bowden tube, look down the actual line of the printer. So you'll look down the hole in the heat sink to see if you can see light at the end of the tunnel. If you can see through that nozzle at the other side, well, then it's clear and you're good to go. This is a used hot end, so there's still some gunk in it. Hot end still works great, just not a need for it at the moment. Next up, we got a submission from one of our Patreon members, Domingo. Thank you for all of your support on the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And we've got what I believe is a PLA print, but it could be PETG. Hilariously, the material doesn't matter here. We've got some perimeter lines that are just not having fun. This, in my opinion, is typically from too cold of extrusion on the printer or you're not adequately cooling it well enough, right? If it's too cold, it's going to shrink much faster. At least that's what I've seen. Domingo's actually making some pokeballs here and he's dealing with uh, some of these lines becoming problems. Now I could say that it has something to do with the angle at which they're printing, but from what I can tell, it's not. This is likely a speed issue, a cooling issue, or a temperature issue. Given how matte the filament looks, this filament looks really, really matte. My first guess is instantly that it's a speed issue. So if you want to maintain those speeds, up your temperatures. If that still doesn't fix it, up your cooling. If your cooling is already at 100%, well, then you gotta slow it down. There's really no other way to do that unless you wanna go to a different cooling system. This came from a while back. We did have this solved reasonably quickly with a temperature adjustment, I believe. So it comes from Mr. Chris Catlett. Thank you, sir, for your support of the channel. And of course, if you guys wanna submit your fails, hashtag print fix, social media links on the screen. Y'all know what to do. Ever since I got it, I've been having issues with my Mono X6K, very often because of print failures like these. I cleaned the vat and ordered a bottle of PTFE, but aside from better supports, is there anything I can do to prevent print failures like this? Chris Catlett will murder me if I don't talk about this, but the whole thing with PTFE on your FEP film or NFEP or whatever film you use on your resin printers is malarkey. It is absolute malarkey. To the point of I fell for it too. Right? Like literally right here is one of my bottles of the three in one PTFE lubricant that everybody used. Uncle Jesse seemed to popularize this method. And I think he saw it from somebody on Reddit. It doesn't work. I mean, I guess, but you're mixing in a adhesion inhibitor, PTFE. It's literally designed to be slick into resin, right? So if you don't get all of it cleaned off, chances are you might end up with some residue left on your print bed, your screen, whatever it might be. Now, personally, all of my printers have it done and I haven't updated it in a while. I've never seen it to be a degradation, but 
I'm also the person that never puts their bed onto FEP. There's always resin in my vats. So whatever, take it with a grain of salt, but it's a hoax. Don't do it. But I think we're going to see more of these failures like this more often right now because it's getting cold out. Baby, it's getting cold outside. The answer is but no. Baby, that means your resin printers are likely getting chilly. Bring them indoors. They have feelings too. Resin printing really is happy around 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade or warmer. If you are unable to keep your room at an ambient temperature, then you should look at getting a heater or some sort of heating element inside of your chamber. Now, we are working on the politician, which is our filter and heater combination. I am really afraid it might not be ready before winter is over this year, but hey, that's what happens sometimes. Product development is what it is, and I only have so much freaking time in the day to work on things. I've seen people use reptile heaters. I've seen people use even like cheap heat guns as long as you can regulate temperature. So there are other ways to do it. They're just a little bit more jank than this system. We can see that a lot of people are saying leachy slicer, leachy slicer, leachy slicer, leachy slicer, leachy slicer, and then adjust your lift speeds and all of that. Leechy is the best slicer in the world, straight up. Oh, look at that. Hilariously, he's even referencing the Uncle Jesse video that I talked about. That's actually really funny. If you're having this issue over months, I don't know. I, I, I don't think NFEP is going to be the answer here. Obviously, we're going to need some settings with your exposure times, your lift speeds. But I would say let's not run anything complicated right now. And let's look at running something like a set of the cones of calibration or something like that, where we can look objectively and see if your exposure settings are set adequately. If you are going to print when it's cold and you don't have an easy way to keep the printer warm, do make sure that you run new cones of calibration to figure out your new exposure settings. Another thing to note, there is something liquid between your screen and your vat. I don't know what it is, but we can see it right back there. There is some sort of liquid, whether that's water, resin, alcohol, I don't know. Whatever that is should be cleaned off as soon as humanly possible, especially if it's resin. You definitely do not want cured resin directly on your screen or even a screen protector for that matter. Need help. Small prints like the print in place models are not sticking to the bed. I've washed it with Dawn, use IPA and raise the bed temp to no avail. This is a satin powder coated sheet. And with any powder coated sheet on Prue says, you need to have your Z offset closer than you think. You want a little bit of squish into that textured build plate so that it can really grip onto your parts as you're printing. That's normally what I would recommend. And it appears the top commenter is absolutely agreeing with me on this. So giving it a try, but they forgot about using a brim. We've talked about this, baby. If you like it, then you should put a brim on it. You feel me? And uh, you can, but like for flexible models like this, brims are a pain in the ass. So try to avoid them when you can for flexi models. But that one's kind of up to you, obviously. Some people are saying that you can use the smooth sheet, but like, if you like the satins, use the satins, right? I really do need to start using my satin sheets. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. I would look at lowering your Z offset a little bit and life should be good. Oh yeah, yeah, you're definitely not close enough. We can see the infill is not perfectly connected. Yeah, you're you're not close enough. Get closer to your first layer and you'll be fine. But yeah, guys, let me know. Obviously, this is Black Friday in the United States and I am filming this in advance. I am spending some time with family and I hope you guys are as well. If I do see some good deals, keep an eye out on Twitter. We'll be posting them over there. And if there is a lot of deals that we can get through. Maybe I'll do a quick little short or something over the weekend for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Don't forget to leave a like. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Cat footage. Cat footage. Look at this cat. She's going to be in the picture. Cat footage. Come on. Come on. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a good stretch. Look at the baby. Look at that baby. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes to all of these awesome Patreon YouTube channel members, supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Want to get your name on the list? Five bucks or more. Links are in the description. 
you guys know what to do at this point. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. Click it, enjoy it, love it, hate it, one of those things. And right next to that will be my video on going to Orlando Maker Fair with the better three quarters. Take a look. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.